So we have two new papers finding a strong association with the triglyceride glucose index and risk of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular specific mortality. So I wanted to share this with you because oftentimes we go to the doctor, we get our blood work, and a few biomarkers might be elevated, but what I like to do is help individuals understand how different related biomarkers can be used together to better ascertain one's risk of future mortality or different diseases. Now, the study that we're going to highlight today is titled Association of the Triglyceride Glucose Index with All-Cause and Cardiovascular Mortality in Adults with Diabetes Aged Less Than 65 Years of Age Without Cardiovascular Disease. There's also another study here titled Associations of the Triglyceride Glucose Index, Triglyceride Glucose Body Mass Index, and Waste Triglyceride Index with Mortality in Patients with Cardiovascular Kidney Metabolic Syndromes from the NHANES data set. So both of these studies, and there's multiple studies, and we've talked about many of these different studies that have looked at the triglyceride glucose index. And I just wanted to introduce this to you because I think it's really important. I like to check this in all of my clients. And so this is, again, you can Google this or you can ask ChatGPT to give you the logarithmic score of your triglyceride glucose index. And I can share this on the screen with you, but I'll just explain this to you if you're driving or listening while you do this. And um, I love to look at the triglycerides and glucose together because oftentimes, as you know, the body can compensate uh, and give one, especially in a fasted state, a low glucose level, even though behind the scenes, there is a incredibly high often fasting insulin. And so when we look at glucose in relation to triglycerides, we're getting a much better idea of overall metabolic health. So how do you test or how do you get the number of your triglyceride glucose index? So you go into ChatGPT or go into Google and type in logarithmic calculator and you type in your triglycerides in milligrams per deciliter times your glucose divided by two. And this is the logarithmic scale of that. And ideally this would be under eight. Okay. As that number gets higher, closer to 10, your risk of dying from all causes, especially cardiovascular disease specific causes increases dramatically. And so of course you might be wondering, well, what are the variables that would affect that? Uh, obviously your glucose fasting, most people are not going to go from a 60 fasting to a 125 fasting. Most people I found most clients who are reasonably metabolically healthy, their fasting glucose is between 85 and 95, generally speaking. There's the odd 110 milligram per deciliter fasting glucose, but most people have a relatively normal-ish fasting glucose. In contrast, fasted triglycerides varies widely. And so the lower that you can get your fasting triglycerides, hint from exercise or low-carb diet and not eating a lot of crap before bedtime, the better off you are. And so this is why I love to look at triglycerides because we have these strong statistical models that show that a low triglyceride glucose index is highly correlated with a high degree of specificity with a lower risk of dying from all causes. Now, I know the data on LDL cholesterol varies widely because the association is more of a U-shaped association. And you know, people on the far end of really high LDL and people on the really low side, there is strong statistical associations that suggest that LDL is linked with all-cause mortality and cardiovascular specific mortality. But between the ranges of 100 milligrams per deciliter up to 165 milligrams per deciliter, there's not really a strong statistical association with all-cause mortality and heart disease. This is why We've looked at various data sets finding that about 50% of people who end up in the ER with a heart attack or acute coronary syndrome, chest pain, and, and shortness of breath, and so forth, um, they have relatively modest cholesterol, le LDL cholesterol levels. And so I love to point out this association here. So again, the logarithmic calculation of your triglyceride level fasted multiplied by your blood glucose level divided by two will give you a number. For most of you, that number is going to be 7.9 or around eight. If that number creeps up closer to 10, you have some work to do. The easiest way to lower this number to get into a more sort of optimal range is obviously to lower your triglycerides. And this is one of the easiest biomarkers to modify with a low carb diet and with exercise. So one of the things that I tell all my clients is you have three knobs when it comes to your metabolism. You have calories and carbohydrates, right? So if you eat a lot of calories and carbohydrates, you need to then dial in these other two knobs. This is exercise in your feeding window. So you have three dials, right? You don't need all of them cranked down all the time. 
If you exercise a lot and fast a lot or compress your feeding window a lot, you have more buffer room in terms of the foods that you can eat. We've seen CrossFitters, we've seen bodybuilders, we've seen endurance athletes that eat pizzas and eat Skittles and this. You're kind of like, well, how can they eat all that food? Well, because they're exercising a lot. So if you don't exercise, the middle knob, the exercise knob, if you don't exercise much, you need a tighter feeding window and you need to more be more vigilant about the calories and the types of carbohydrates that you eat. Now, if you're exercising and compressing your feeding window, you have a lot more leeway in the types of foods that you can eat. Now, that doesn't mean that you can go out and eat Skittles and bonbons and Pop-Tarts all the time. But I think it's important to recognize that one of the easiest ways to lower your triglycerides is to regularly walk and to regularly do resistant training and do compound movements and eat a moderate or low-carb style diet. So that's my recommendation there. Uh, I'll put links and tools in the description below, but I think this is important an important tool for those of you to be aware of that we don't want to get obsessed about one biomarker. Like, oh my gosh, my fasting glucose is 95 or 85. My doctor said everything is fine. But if your triglycerides are 160 or 140, and I often see people with normal glucose levels, but really high triglyceride levels. So I think this is important to recognize that it's just not all about glucose or even it's not all about triglycerides. It's about the ratio between the two. So hopefully you found this information helpful. I would like to know what you think in the comment section below. And if you're brave, you can post your triglyceride glucose index in the comment section below. And I'm going to post mine. Let's make this more widespread so people understand this. Sometimes it takes years for these these new biomarkers or associations from the literature to make it into mainstream medicine. But the more that we talk about it, the more that we can advance healthcare in this country and throughout the world. So help others better understand this by posting yours in the comment section below. We'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.